In this section, I'm going to talk about dimensional analysis and um, basically how we can develop relationships about a system based on the, the parameters that we know. And I'm going to show you a method of how to do this, which is called the Buchanan and Pi theorem. But first, why do we need um, dimensional analysis? Well, some laws can be described from first principles, can be determined analytically. However, if you've got quite a complex um, uh, law or um, you know fundamental principle, that as is often the case with fluids, then it's difficult to describe from first principles and can't be particularly well understood. And it has to be determined experimentally. And um, so what you need to do is you need to, or the way you would have to do it without dimensional analysis, is you'd have to keep different constants the same, very other... Um, variables and try and understand what the um, the underlying laws are and that just before I move on to the dimensional analysis you know I'll talk about the the variables um, just quickly so you kind of generally have geometric type variables so length diameter breadth um, that sort of thing then sort of had dynamic or kinematic variables such as velocity volumetric flow rate force or pressure and acceleration and then also you have um, fluid properties such as the um, uh, the density of the the fluid, um, viscosity, surface tension, and um, and so on. Okay, so I'm going to use the classic example um, of a sphere um, that's in a cross flow, and we're going to try and determine a relationship that describes the force acting on this sphere. Um, based on all the relevant um, variables. And we're going to do this um, using dimensional analysis. And let's say you could um, do lots of experiments. You could put this um, sphere in a wind tunnel and change um, all the parameters that affect it. But to get the underlying relationship, it will take you quite a long time and a lot of effort to do that. So I'm going to show you how we can um, reduce this effort using the Bucket and Pi theorem. So, the first thing you need to do for um, any form of dimensional analysis, really, is to have an understanding, an initial understanding of what um, the parameters are that affect your system. So you can see I've written it here. So for this sphere, we say that the force that's acting on it, okay, is a function of these four variables. So the diameter of the sphere, and you can imagine it's the diameter um, changes, the force acting on it will change, the velocity of the flow, um, the density of the fluid and also the viscosity of the fluid. Now choosing these variables at the start is, um, as I say, um, needs some understanding of the system that you've got um, and also uh, which ones you can include and can't include. So, um, for example, gravity isn't normally um, included in this system because uh, for example, in our example, you can see that gravitational effects would be negligible, although gravity will always kind of be acting on it. So you need to, the really, one really, I guess I'm really saying is you want to um, consider what the dominant variables are that are acting on your, um, uh, based on the relationship that you're trying to find. Okay, so I'm going to go through this Buchanan and Pi theorem um, for you now. So first, I'm just going to read through the steps, and um, these won't initially make sense at first, um, but I'm going to go um, apply them to the example on the previous slide of this um, force acting on the sphere, and then hopefully it'll become clear. So first, we need to identify all the dependent and independent variables. We need to count the number of um, dependent and independent variables, and that gives us number n. We need to write each variable in fundamental units, and I talked about that earlier in the lecture. We then need to count the number of fundamental units, and this is J. And normally, for most um, of these analysis, J will be equal to three, as um, M, L, and T will appear in all of or some of our um, fundamental units. We then need to select J repeating groups. Okay, so if J is three, we need three repeating groups. And as I say, that won't make sense to you now, but um, it will later on. Um, and then we use the J repeating groups to form K dimensionless groups, okay? So where K is the number of variables minus the number of fundamental dimensions we have. 
Then the final part of the solution is we need to relate the dimensionless groups um, or the dimensionless group of the dependent variable with the dimensionless groups from the independent variables. Okay, so I'm going to go through this step by step. So <clears throat> the first step is to identify the dependent and independent variables. So for our example, the force is a dependent variable and that's dependent on these independent variables, the diameter, um, the velocity, the density of the fluid and the viscosity of the fluid. Okay. And we've kind of already written in that form, actually, so that's um, perhaps fairly obvious. Then we need to count the number of dependent and independent variables. So in our example, we have five, force, diameter, velocity, density, and viscosity. So n is equal to five. We then need to write each variable in terms of its fundamental units. So um, if you remember force, you could write as mass times length over time squared. And I showed you how to do that earlier in the lecture. Uh, the diameter is obviously just length, velocity is length over time, uh, the density is mass over volume or mass over length um, cubed, and the viscosity, if you don't know what the units are that, so the SI units are Pascal seconds, um, Pascal is Newton per meter squared, and if you substitute in for, and obviously Newton is force times area, so if you take it back to, um, you know, its most fundamental form, Substituting the fundamental units, you'll find you'll see that um, viscosity is equal to has a, the fundamental units of mass over length over time. Okay. Right. So then, step four, we need to count the number of fundamental dimensions. Okay. So you can see in here that um, all or that um, these units have a combination of m, l, or t. They've even got them all in, or one or two of them. Okay. So we've got three fundamental units that can describe our um, independent and dependent variables. Now, before we start the analysis, we just need to select um, J repeating groups. And the reason why they're called repeating groups is because we're going to compare our repeating group or our repeating set against the non-repeating set. Okay, and there's... Um, the way that you choose this repeating group is firstly the group that you choose must contain all of your fundamental um, variables and also the selection of these groups um, sometimes isn't there's no hard and fast rules about um, which ones you should choose other than that they must have between them they must um, have all the fundamental units but it's generally a um, combination of experience and, again, a little bit of knowledge of your system that will help you select these sets. So we're going to choose diameter. Well, first of all, we can't choose um, force because that's our dependent variable. OK, so and that's not going to be in our um, repeating group. We choose diameter, which has length scale. We choose velocity because it has um, time in it. And we're also going to choose density because it has mass in it as well. So we've got covered the three. We could have chosen viscosity instead of density. Um, and actually, if you do that, the analysis would be quite similar. But um, one of the reasons is, you know, it's, it's just simpler. This has only got two terms in it instead of three. So we're going to take these three as our repeating group. So we said the now we need to, um, using our repeating group, we need to form k dimensionless groups where k is n minus j so we had five variables we've got three fundamental dimensions therefore we will need two groups okay to describe this relationship now the way that you form these dimensionless groups is um, use capital pi I'm not sure why it's the pi theorem and um, so this is our first group so subscript one and this is equal to um, some function of our dependent variable and our repeating group. So you can see diameter, um, velocity and density. And we don't yet know what this relationship is going to be. So you can see we've raised each of our um, repeating group um, to a power and we don't know what this is. So we say B and C. Now here we substitute in the fundamental dimensions. OK, so force is um, this term in this bracket here diameters here, remembering to keep to the power of A, um, velocity and density. Now we can, for each fundamental unit, we can write an equation in terms of the exponents. 
So on the left hand side of this equation, because this pi group is dimensionless, we said it's going to be dimensionless, it must have no units of mass. Okay, but on the right hand side, we've got mass in here. Okay, so we've got one plus there's no mass in this term, no mass in this term, but there is mass in the last term um, to the power of c. So we write solving for the exponents, we can write it like this. Obviously, you don't necessarily have to write these zeros, but I've just written it for completeness. So you can see that um, for mass, there are no, um, there is no mass in the middle two terms. Okay, so if we do that for length, um, then again, this side is dimensionless. Um, we have length in this term. We have length in this term, so it's length to the power of a, length to the power of b, and here we've got minus um, length uh, to the minus 3 to the power of c, so that gives us 3c. And you can do the same thing for time. Again, the left-hand side is dimensionless. Uh, we've got to minus 2 here. There's no time in this term. There is time in this term. It's to minus b, and there's no time in the last term. Okay, so you can see now we have three equations and three unknowns, a, b, and c. So we can solve that. So from the previous slide, I'm just rewriting the set here. And if you rearrange and solve um, for this, you'll see that find out that a is minus 2, b is also minus 2, and c is minus 1. Now, if we substitute back into the original um, expression that we had, a, b, and c, we end up with this first pi group, this first dimensionless pi group, and I've written it in a more um, conventional um, form here. So this is our first um, dimensionless group. Now, we that that's fine, that's our first one, but we said that we needed two dimensionless groups, so we need to find the second one. So our second dimensionless group is we take our second um, variable and compare it to the repeating set. Okay, so again, this is the same, diameter, um, velocity and density, all to the power of a, b, and c. Then we substitute in the fundamental dimensions for viscosity, diameter, velocity, and density. Solve for each fundamental unit, so you can see mass is in the first term, it's not in the middle two terms, it's in the last term, but to the power of c. We do it for length, so we've got minus one in our first term, um, to the power of a in our second term, to the power of b in our third term, and minus 3c in our last term. And for in terms of time, we've got um, time to the minus 1, no time in the second term, to the minus b in the second term, no time in the third term. So this is our equations from the previous slide. And so we've got three equations, three unknowns, a, b, and c. And if you solve for this, you can find that a, b, and c are all equal to minus 1. So if we substitute that back into the um, the expression that we have for our second um, pi group, we can see that it's equal to the um, viscosity divided by the diameter times um, velocity times the density. Okay, So now we've got our two um, dimensionless groups that we said that we would from our analysis. So the final step is to relate the dimensionless groups back to the um, of the dependent variable to the dimensionless groups of the independent variable. So this, we start off with this original expression. So we have our dimensionless group of our dependent variable, which was our first pi group, and that is a function of our um, second um, uh, dimensionless group, which is you know if mind is viscosity over diameter times velocity times density. Now this <coughs> parameter, or actually rather the inverse of this um, group, is called the Reynolds number. And this is quite an important dimensionless group in um, fluid dynamics, and we refer to it um, quite a lot in um, the next, I over the, in the future lectures. Um, so as I say, it's quite an important one. Um, to, to remember, it kind of describes whether flow is laminar or turbulent and so on. So anyway, back to our, um, so we can put that back into here. So our um, force um, is now equal to, is some function of Reynolds number times by diameter squared, velocity squared, and density. So that's what we had on the previous slide. Now, as I said, this Buckingham Python will only take you so far. So what it will do is it will show you how the parameters are related, 
but it won't give you the exact or the final um, relationship. You still need to do some experiments to do that, but the amount that you need to do is cut down a lot because you already um, know how roughly how the parameters are related. So we can show experimentally that the drag force, uh, which is obviously the force on this sphere, is equal to a half the drag coefficient times density times area times velocity squared. Now you might have seen this term before actually, um, but I've just shown you how it was developed. So you can see in here, this is, comes from the Buckingham Pi theorem. So um, you've got density from our um, uh, dimensional analysis. So the area is a length scale squared, diameter squared. And you've also got the velocity squared. So you see that the Reynolds number doesn't really appear in here because it's some function of Reynolds number. But in fact, this um, discharge, uh, sorry, this drag coefficient is um, a function of Reynolds number. So you can see here a plot of the um, drag coefficient for Reynolds number. And you can see that this could only be determined experimentally. The shape of this curve is quite complex. It's not easy to write an equation that will fit to this curve, um, you know, because of its shape. So normally this would be used as a lookup table. So you can see that this relationship between the, the drag coefficient and Reynolds number is quite complex. You can make some approximations. So you can see that for Reynolds number um, much less than one, then the the drag coefficient can be related to a constant divided by, by Reynolds number for that to be used. but. Generally, it's um, kind of determined experimentally. So to say, that shows you how um, complex relationships underpinning fluid processes can be determined using dimensional analysis and this Buckingham Pi theorem. So that concludes this lecture. Thank you for listening.